I finally bought it. What's up guys, it's Nick. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I've been wanting this mouse for a long time. I was hoping to buy it on release near December, however restocks and availability were not cooperating. Luckily, I found out that every Saturday there was a restock on the Logitech website, and I managed to catch one. So let's take a look at the Logitech G Pro X Superlight and why I think it's the best mouse on the market right now. If you can tell by the box and the previous B-roll, I got the white version of the mouse, but more on that in a bit. This is a premium feeling box for a premium product. My first impressions of the mouse is quite mind-blowing. I've never felt such a light mouse, and my first thought went straight to a piece of styrofoam in terms of weight. Inside, you'll find the micro USB cable with the Trident design prongs, as well as the wireless connector and extender you find in previous products. But come on Logitech, micro USB? Really? You can use this cable to both play and charge if you run out of juice. However, with the battery life, it would be very spread out. Inside, you'll also find rubberized grip tape in case the smooth matte finish isn't exactly your thing. My only issue with this is even though it's extremely practical and nice of Logitech to include it, with the white version, you do not get white grip tape. This would completely change the look of the mouse, so I won't be using it. Getting a bit more technical, this mouse comes in at 125 millimeters in length, 64 millimeters in width, and around 40 millimeters in height. It has one of the most versatile and safe shapes in mice, fitting any hand placements you prefer. I have pretty big hands and I tend to palm grip, but lately I've been trying out claw and fingertip grips and I've had no issue whatsoever. It's important to take note that this does not replace the previous G Pro Wireless, but it does take the role of the flagship mouse as well as coming at a premium price point, $149.99 against a $129.99 price tag. There are a few slight distinctions between them, the biggest one being the weight. The Superlight is being promoted at below 63 grams. My copy in particular is closer to 59. This is a big difference between the older model at nearly 80 grams. The right swappable buttons for left-handed users have been removed completely and now there's a more pronounced ridge on the side where they used to be. All the RGB capabilities have also been removed for the sake of cutting weight, so where the backlit G logo stood now is a painted on matte silver. The scroll wheel as well now has a more distinct look, with its white highlights on both the white and black versions of this mouse. On the previous G Pro, there were three LED indicators, which have now been replaced by just one. By default, waking up the mouse, you will be shown the current battery level and then the DPI it's been set at. Speaking of which, the bottom DPI button has now been removed and the only way to set it is through the Logitech G Hub app. This is also where you manage what your button commands are and while there are a large variety of options to choose from, keep in mind this is a gaming mouse and only has a total of 5 buttons. You could also use one of those side buttons to activate G Shift allowing you access to 4 more options. Underneath, we also see a pretty distinct change between the two, and that's the much larger zero additive PTFE glide surface. The front glide has the biggest change in area. They've kept the center glide as is, with the rear glide going from a segmented strip to a continuous semicircle. They've also included another puck with a complete glide surface just to fill in your glide needs and kinks. It's also nearly identical in terms of weight to the stock one. This makes the bottom a huge mouse gate and I'm all for it. The power play puck is also compatible just in case you have that expensive and wonderful mouse pad. And this is also where you keep your wireless dongle. Speaking of which, you can still use your previous adapters for the G Pro Wireless and the headset. Nothing has changed there. We're still using the Hero 25K sensor. I'm quite new to the 2.4 GHz wireless, but I've had no issue with either range having the dongle close by. And I've been blown away by the performance of this mouse. Something they've nailed on the head is the issue with the double clicking. Ever since the Shroud version of the G Pro wireless, they've updated the switches on both these products making this fairly close to a non-issue altogether. Kudos to you, Logitech. Something that I have found out using this mouse for the past month or so is that when you're like me and you get really into what you're playing, I tend to click a little bit harder on the left click on the mouse than I probably should. This makes a huge post-travel thunk and I've had to really dial it back and be conscious of how I click. Probably not important, but hey, I'm being honest.
Coming from a hefty 150 gram mouse and cutting that to more than half, the change is immediately noticeable. I feel like I play much better with both freer movements that come from the wireless aspect to faster adjustments that I can make with the weight. To put that into perspective, I ended last act in Valorant, heart stuck silver, and now I'm effortlessly cruising down gold and I've been playing much less due to time constraints. I'm opening a Valorant channel just to see how far I can go by just using this mouse. Going from gold to probably platinum by the end of the week all the way to immortal. So if you're interested in following my little challenge, the link to the new channel is down below. I'd appreciate the follow. Battery life is also something very important to consider. In the past month of heavy use, I've only had to charge it once. It's deemed to last 70 hours of continuous use, and if you compare it to other mouse in the market, like the Razer Viper Ultimate or the Model O Wireless, you would have to turn the RGB completely off to even consider hitting those numbers. Speaking about the competition, let's talk about numbers. These are the immediate competitors to the Superlight. They each come with their own quirks and features, so let's give a quick overview on them and compare them. The Razer Viper Ultimate, while being priced around the same, you get a charging dock and usability for left-handed users. Many people state that they prefer the shape of Razer's mouse, but that's down to personal preference. Weight is around 75 grams and it uses optical switches. You also get a variety of colors, but again, that's personal preference. The elephant in the room is quite honestly the Model O Wireless. The $80 price tag for an excellent 69 gram mouse is just astonishing, but it isn't perfect by any means whatsoever. The honeycomb design is something I'm not a fan of and there's no left hand usability. But both of them have RGB capabilities as well. So would any of these mice make you play better than the other? No. Average users like myself and most of the consumer market would probably play as well with any of these options. It's really down to what you enjoy the most, what you're most comfortable with, and honestly, how much you're willing to pay. So would I recommend this mouse? No. So why did you buy it then, Nick? Well, to me, this is the best mouse on the market. Being one of the lightest consumer grade models, backed by Logitech and the G Pro Wireless, the aesthetics which I completely fell in love with since the G Pro Ghost Edition, as well as me being in that unique position that I can afford it, all came together into the G Pro X Superlight. But there is that little issue about the price. You simply do not need to spend $150 on a very unique and distinct mouse. This is by all means a professional gaming mouse. But that doesn't mean that everyday users like me can't use it. You'll hear a lot of content creators say this, but ever since the conception of the Model O Wireless, the tables have completely shifted. And being more affordable and at that plateau in which the competition stands, it's a very enticing feature. Again, I do think that the Superlight is a better mouse. It's just double the price. Still, I absolutely love my mouse. It takes off all the boxes that I needed and wanted in a gaming mouse. Also, I was really excited for it and it did not disappoint. But what are your thoughts on it? Do you think it's worth the price tag? Do you already own a G Pro and are thinking about switching to the Superlight? I'm really curious about your opinion, so let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, remember that a like and a sub go a long way. I hope I'll see you next time. I'm gonna go play with my mouse. See ya.